All right, this is A.CED.2. This is algebra. Creating equations that describe numbers or relationships. Standard 2, video 4. We are going to be writing linear equations in standard form. Here's your term to uh, define in your journals. Standard form is uh, another form of a linear equation. So we have ax plus by equaling c, where a, b, and c must all be real numbers. a and b cannot both be 0 at the same time. When that happens, you're going to lose both of your variables. Um, because they'll both be zero non-existent and you'll be losing your X's and Y's which would not allow you to plot any points to create this line. Here we're gonna write an equation in standard form of the line shown so there is given information you have to use any piece that they give you uh, to help create this standard form equation so I know that in a line I'm going to need uh, a slope and some type of intercept. So let's uh, figure out what the slope of the line is. There's two ways that you can do it. Uh, you can take the given ordered pairs, throw them into your slope equation and figure out your M. Uh, since they give us a grid, I would like to just use my, uh, my vision here to find my rise and my run. So if I take these two points, my rise will be uh, up 3 and left 1. So M is going to be rise 3 and go left 1. And that simplifies to negative 3. All right. Now, uh, we are going to take a point and plug it into the point slope form that we just learned. So we have our point slope form. And let's plug in some of the information that they give us. Let's take one of the ordered pairs from our line. And uh, I like to use 1, 1 because I'm not dealing with any negatives here. And 1 is a pretty easy number to work with. So uh, either one that you pick would work. I'm going to choose 1, 1. OK, so uh, you know what? Let's get rid of this grid so we can just focus on the paper here and not worry about We don't really need all those grid lines anymore. So it's easier to see here. So y subtracted by, again, I chose this ordered pair. Uh, 1 is equal to the slope that I've just found, which is negative 3. And subtracted by 1. So now I'm in point slope form. And what you need to realize is that knowing all of these different forms, we're going to be able to use each of them in different ways to help us figure out these equations of lines. So now we're going to uh, distribute our negative 3. Negative 3 times x. Negative 3 times negative 1. And now I'm going to be looking to combine like terms. So I see that I have a negative 1 and a positive 3 that I need to get together. So uh, let's add 1 to both sides. And I know that positive 3 added to 1 is positive 4. And that looks familiar. I see that I am in slope intercept form. So we've seen two of our different forms so far. Now we're going to learn about the third form. So here again, we have the point slope form. We've turned the point slope form into slope intercept form. And now we're going to take the slope intercept form and we're going to turn it into standard form. And by doing that, uh, according to it, we need the AX and the BY on the left side of the equal sign and we need our C term on the right side. 
So if I'm taking my AX term and bringing it to the left side, I'm going to be changing its sign. So negative 3X becomes positive 3X. There's no need to move my BY term. So it was positive Y. It remains positive Y. And I didn't need to move my C term from the right because I need it on the right. So it remains as a positive 4. So if I'm in standard form, I have 3x plus y equals 4, where a is my 3, b is my positive 1, and c is my positive 4. All right, same idea. Now they give me two points without a grid, without a line, without a picture to look at. So I'm just going to have to take that information and put it into this standard form here. And, and again, recognize that all of the three forms will help us generate the form that is desired. All right, so we're going to find our slope first. So here I'm going to have to use my rise over my run, the change in the y over the change in the, change in the x. So let's just go with 9 subtracted by 1 over 3 subtracted by 1. And we're going to get uh, 9 minus 1 is 8, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So we have a slope of 4. <clears throat> now, again, we're going to take one of the points. It doesn't matter which one. And plug it into our point slope formula. So we have, again, I like to pick 1, 1. It's easy to work with. So point slope. And let's just plug in our, or substitute in our numbers here. M is 4. X sub 1 is 1. All right, use your distributive property. We are now in point slope form. Let's get out of point slope form. Let's combine like terms. I take my negative one to the right, which makes it a positive one. So negative four plus one is negative three. I am now in slope intercept form. Let's take that slope intercept form and rearrange it so that we are in standard form. So we're going to take our positive 4x, bring it to the left. It becomes negative 4x. Keep my y where it is, positive y, and keep my negative 3. So we have an equation of the line in standard form. A is negative 4, B is positive 1, and C is negative 3. Now we're going to write equations of the horizontal and vertical lines that pass through this given point. So the given point is 3, 2. And if I were to go to 3, 2, plot it, I know that I can have these two lines that go through it. One is going to be horizontal and one is going to be vertical. So let's just put the horizontal in there first. And it runs through the point. Three, two. And then I have the vertical line that also runs through 3, 2. Let's make that one purple. Here's the vertical line, and it went right through 3, 2. And I mean, we're, we're basically done with the problem, but I want to explain um, what the actual equations are. So if I were to look at the horizontal equation, it would be noted as y is equal to 2. 
and the vertical line is known as x is equal to 3. Now, if you look at the ordered pairs, or the ordered pair, it says, well, the x is 3 and the y is 2. So you have these simple equations. Now, where did those equations uh, generate from? Well, they generated from this function table of values. And you're probably saying, what is he talking about? Well, the function value of tables are these ordered pairs that created this line. You know what? Let me use the, I'll do a better color scheme here. So if I'm looking at the horizontal line of y equals 2, let's do that in pink. So I have x and y. Well, all of the points that created this line can be drawn in, including the one called 3, 2. And if I were to list all of those values, what do you see in common? Well, this point right here is known as 0, 2. I can move over to the one on the right, and it's known as 1, 2. 2, 2. <laughs> I said 2, 2. 3, 2. Moving right along, our point in question. And if I look at my table of values, I know that all of my y's are always going to be equal to 2, which is why I have my equation of y is equal to 2. And if you were to think of that in terms of standard form, we don't have any ax value. Um, we don't have any slope of the line on this one. Um, it's actually zero. So if I, you know, we talked about zero and undefined slopes. So that means that I must have had zero x's if I were to put this into standard form. But we don't we don't need that anymore because zero multiplied by all of my x values eliminated all of my x values. So we just know it as y is equal to two. And then uh, on the converse to that, we're looking at the vertical line called x equals 3. So let's make a function table for that. And uh, I mean, we can draw in all of our points. And I think you're going to get the idea here. Uh, this ordered pair is known as 3, 0. Uh, we have 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. And you see the theme here that all of your x's are equal to 3, which is where we come up with this x equals 3. And looking at that in standard form, it looks like we've lost our y value. So it would look like this. x plus 0y is equal to 3. And we know that the y is now eliminated. If you think back to our definition of standard form, where you can't have both A and B being 0, because then they're both gone, and you don't have a line. So we can simply state it as x is equal to 3. All right, last one. It says find the missing coefficient in the equation of the line that passes through this point and then write the completed equation. So if I'm finding the missing coefficient, I know that a is a, 8 is a coefficient, b is a coefficient, and our c is known as positive 4. So we're going to try to figure out what this b term is. So using this given point, this is your x and this is your y, we're going to substitute them in. So 8 times x plus b, which is unknown, times 4, 4 coming from our point, and that's equal to our given c. So negative 40, b times 4 is known as 4b. Just rewrite that a little bit, it's a little cleaner. And now, if we're solving for our variable, we know that we need to get our like terms together. So let's bring our negative 40 to the right side of the equal sign. So that's going to look like positive 4 added to 40, which is 44, 
divide both sides and you know that your B coefficient is 11 and now we take all of that information and put it into standard form. So we have 8x, our B is now positive 11 equaling our C. Okay, in your journals, please define the given term. Uh, write a few sentences on what you learned from the video. If you have any questions, as always, uh, please don't hesitate to ask those in class. And we're going to spend a large amount of time uh, working through some application problems that uh, correlate to standard form.